right. Let's get started. Not quite to, not quite to the standard of Swiss trains, but uh, we're going to get started again here uh, a little bit after uh, 1.30. Um, and I'm, I'm Brendan McLean. I, I'm here from the University of Washington in Seattle, uh, where I've been working for the last seven and a half years, approximately, to create a piece of software uh, specifically designed uh, to, to help people do targeted proteomics. And that's Skyline. Um, how many of you had heard about Skyline before coming to this course? Most people, yeah. And, and then we saw that about ha maybe half of you have actually used it. Um, well, when I first came to ETH, I, I met Tina uh, Ludwig, who, who when I first met her, she said, um, oh, you, you know, I'm not a software person. You probably want to talk to some of the programmers in our, in our group. And, and my response was, no, I, you know, I'm really trying to create Skyline at a level that anybody who's comfortable using Excel should be comfortable using Skyline. Um, so that's what, we're, that's what we're striving for. It's not a, a programmer's piece of software, per se. It's supposed to be for people who are doing mass spectrometry and proteomics. So Skyline itself uh, started out. Um, it started its life as a tool for selected uh, reaction monitoring, SRM, and that's the data that we're going to be dealing with uh, here in the first couple of days. But uh, it's been around for seven and a half years, and it's grown down into the, this region of uh, actually supporting parallel reaction monitoring, which you heard about from Tina, PRM, DIA, SWATH, and actually even uh, data-dependent acquisition data. In all cases, Skyline is doing what I consider chromatography-based quantification. So uh, Skyline is either just taking chromatograms that are produced by a triple quadrupole or, in other cases, extracting them from this three-dimensional space of uh, intensity, mass-to-charge ratio, and retention time that mass spectrometers measure. And so in this case, this is a schematic showing full scans uh, getting collected over time, so you can see the entire mass to charge range from about 300 to, 400 to 1400 is getting collected, and we have these spectra, and then eventually we take a piece of software like Skyline and ask it to, to extract chromatograms for various targeted uh, mass to charge ratios. Um, and then what you'll see in Skyline when you start to work with it is that everything gets compressed down into a set of chromatograms uh, in a two-dimensional space of intensity and retention time. We call Yes, we call those chromatograms. Here are peak boundaries, and then what we use as a proxy for uh, abundance of our peptides is the areas under these curves. Um, and that's, the, that's really, it's the same principle for all of these. Uh, except in DDA we do it with MS1 only, and the other ones we can actually extract fragment ions, as, as you've heard before. So, and then when I think about the four methods, I like to separate them into this two-by-two two matrix, uh, where we have over on the left targeted methods, and so for targeted acquisition, so it's an acquisition type targeted, you have to tell the mass spectrometer really exactly what you want to measure, and sometimes we get uh, you know, specific enough about it that we're talking about actual retention times when we expect to see things. Uh, and so we have scheduled acquisition, which you're going to be seeing some of uh, in the next couple tutorials. Um, but, it, but it takes a lot of time, as Tina said, to prepare for targeted acquisition. It takes a lot of refinement. Uh, and then one of the reasons that this other uh, set of things, you know, set of techniques is so popular is over here we're doing survey acquisition where we actually we measure a range of mass to charge ratio comprehensively and then we can go and do targeted analysis of it and extract chromatograms somewhere in that range but we don't have to know ahead of time what we're going to measure and that's the really appealing thing about it. So the Skyline project itself, as I said, it's been, you know, I wrote the first lines of code in uh, August of 2008. So it's been around, you know, it's been in development for seven and a half years. Um, this is the eighth year of development. It's now got six developers. Uh, it's over 500, or five, 400,000 lines of code, possibly over 500 by now. Uh, it's all open source. 
and freely available. Um, and we have six, over 60,000 lines of code for testing. So we spend a lot of time on testing and all the developers have, or come from a professional development background. We're all really proud of how much testing Skyline gets and, ha and all the tools we've built to, to keep it stable and working and reliable so that, I mean, you know, one of the things that you can see this graph, this is a graph of, of the number of instances of Skyline started up in a seven day period. And I've been really proud of the fact that, that, that as I make new releases, each color here is a new release. I've been really proud of the fact that pretty much people switch over to the new re release pretty quickly, which I, I think is a testament to uh, both you know, that we're continuing to create interesting software and that people feel like they can rely on us to keep each release very stable. Um, so there are nearing 7,000 registered users. Those are actual live email addresses. We send email out to these people. So you may have gotten some of the emails by now. Uh, and, and they respond, you know, or they, they don't tell us to take them off the email list. So, <laughs> uh, and when, we, and when we get bounced emails, we, we, we pull them off this list. Uh, so in most cases, there are now over 8,000 instances started each week. Uh, we certainly have these low spots. And it, I like to say that if I've learned anything quantitative uh, in working on Skyline over the last seven and a half years, it's that not a lot of proteomics gets done between Christmas and New Year's. Um, and then... Uh, and then it's funded by NIH. Uh, that's our core funding, and that's been really important uh, to be able to get a five-year grant and say, yeah, Skyline's going to be around for five years, and we're up for that next, next one th this year. We've been applying for it. Um, but then also, uh, we've become critical enough to the six instrument vendors that they're, they're all now helping to fund Skyline. And this is the rest of the story. You can see that this only goes out to maybe the beginning of 2015, and this goes out to actually today. You can see we had another big dip over Christmas. There's a new release out, 3.5. That's what you're going to be working with. And you can see that we get these spikes, and we're, not, we're currently up around 9,000 in a week. And maybe you guys will cause a spike by all the, all the incredible use you're going to give Skyline in the next week. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, this just keeps going, and it's, and it's been incredible to watch it continue to grow. Uh, also, I like to look at uh, sort of geographically what's what's happening with Skyline. I met, met some people in this group who are from uh, f further east in Europe than, than I've seen before, and that's that's starting. So it seems like Skyline's moving east. I was telling people, yes, there there is does seem to be some people over in Moscow uh, using Skyline. Um, and these are the top 10 cities where Skyline is, has been used, in the or actually not where uh, people have visited the Skyline website in the last uh, six months. But you can see it's pretty worldwide, uh, and, and it's been great to watch that spread and, and to see people. Uh, you know, I was talking to Yang Shang. He's like, I'm going to go back to China, and it's been very excited, exciting to, to actually, this is, uh, I think this is Shanghai, uh, which is near where he is from. Uh, and then and Beijing, and I've, I've been to Tokyo a few, a few times, and, and Japan. Um, so it's pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, you could get, you could now get a job in pretty much any proteomics lab in the world, and uh, most of them would would view the fact that if you're an expert in Skyline, they would view that as a um, as as a plus. Um, and yeah, Tina just said she's just gone to Munich, and she says, "Oh, everybody's coming to me and asking me about Skyline. They want to, you know, learn more about Skyline." So, uh, it, it's a it's a valuable asset on the job market if you're a proteomics researcher. Um, and then this is zooming into Europe a little bit. You can see this big blue spot, which is Zurich, where you are right now, um, and and you can see lots of spots all over Europe. And these are the top ten cities in Europe. Uh, have been doing a lot of, somebody asked, like, how many of these have you done, uh, these uh, courses? And uh, been doing a lot of teaching of targeted proteomics because I guess pretty early on I realized, you know, oh, wow, people are doing targeted proteomics are really excited about Skyline. And then I realized, wow, there aren't that many of them. <laughs> um, and, and so if I want this to grow, I have to actually, you know, be involved in teaching people how to do, do this type of approach. Um, so yeah, in, t in 
2014, we had three, uh, three week long courses and that's expanded now to five week long courses in the last two years, uh, in a number of different places, which Ben has already mentioned. And, um, and they're all oversubscribed and we get really good, good reviews. Hopefully you'll, you'll find it as useful as, as your predecessors. Uh, but we get, you know, pretty, pretty amazing reviews of how useful this course is to people. Uh, there are 14 tutorials now. I only had space to show 12, um, but uh, so there's a lot of tutorial content. You're going to work through a specific set of tutorials designed for this course, but there's a whole and and maybe we'll walk through some some of this tutorial uh, content in what we call the Sky Jams with me. Uh, but there's a whole wealth of extra information out on the Skyline website and actually on a flash drive that you're going to get. Uh, and you can work your way through these tutorials. In the last year, we've also added these webinars. So there's recorded video uh, pertaining to a lot of these tutorials, in some case working through the tutorials, in some case adding, adding new tutorials. But there's now, there's now 12 webinars, uh, which I've gotten a lot of really positive feedback as well. And I invite you to go up there and look at those. One of the uh, really fun things, uh, in getting involved with Japan and China is that we've actually translated uh, Skyline, the software itself, to Ch Chinese and Japanese, and then we've uh, started translating the tutorials. We've gotten through six are fully translated up on the website, and three are, are in review right now. So that's that's been pretty cool. Uh, it, it supports instruments from all of these six instrument vendors. They obviously uh, value it and are and are helping to fund Skyline development, um, and and one of the early goals was to to make it so that uh, you could import data directly from the instrument and export uh, transition lists and methods directly to the instrument, trying to get as close to the instrument so there wasn't a whole lot of conversion, there wasn't uh, a lot of extra things to to worry about. Um, and prior to Skyline, I think the, the state of the art was uh, to, to have people convert their files to some like MZXML or, or, or some uh, format, uh, standard format. Uh, and it took quite a lot of, quite a lot of work to, to convince all of these instrument vendors to give us these libraries that we could install with Skyline that would that would read their data. And initially, they were like, "No, we only want we only want people who buy our instruments, buy our software to have those libraries." And uh, eventually, they all came around. But um, as a testament to sort of how how much Skyline reached the people that were that were actually that were Excel users and not programmers and command line users. At one point, one of my closest collaborators, I I, I realized, okay. For this this set of things, you're going to need to do conversion to MZXML, and she's like, "Oh, okay. We're going to have to have a lab meeting and explain to everybody how to use the command line." And 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 I and so it it and it seemed like a big deal to her. So it, to me, it was like, "Okay, that that sort of proves that you know not a, that 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 there is this barrier. There was this barrier, and that uh, making that." making the data import as transparent as possible was, was helping to get uh, closer to the users. So the goal, this is a schematic I drew of sort of the very early on in Skyline. The goal of Skyline was to take these discovery experiments uh, and, and things that we were learning in the discovery experiments, take them into something I, I, we coined as the targeted method refinement cycle. Uh, so just sort of admitting that, well, you get you get these initial discoveries and they're interesting, but you don't necessarily immediately have a targeted, you don't have a quantitative assay. That may take a lot of work. It may take uh, measurements. It may take building familiarity with your targets uh, to get to what, what we would consider a truly quantitative assay. And in this, and in fact, the group that I was working with was aiming for clinical assays. So, and, and that's even more work. Uh, again, um, uh, as a measure of, you know, or just a goal of trying to get closer to what users have and not, and, and, and away from forcing them to do conversions. Uh, Sky, the Skyline team has done a lot of work to support uh, data independent acquisition, spectrum matching, and we find that proteomics, people doing DDA experiments uh, for proteomics are using a lot of different search engines, and Skyline attempts to 
uh, take all of that, the output from these search engines, build them into spectral libraries that then can be used in Skyline. And you're going to go through that process at least once uh, while you're here. Uh, but if, if when you go home, you know, you go through this process with, uh, I'm not sure what format they're using here, but it's probably coming out of the TPP. Um, you go home and you're like, well, you know, actually I'm using MSGF plus or I'm using mascot. Uh, Skyline supports that just as well. And so you can take those, the lessons you're learning here and apply them to whatever search engine you're using. Uh, and, and that along with spectral libraries, we, we also build retention time libraries, which you're going to work on today, uh, and, and incorporate uh, a fair amount of previous measurements along with just sort of starting with a uh, broad set of measurements, uh, take this into targeted method refinement and get quantitative access. Zooming in on the idea of targeted method refinement, it looks kind of like this. So we start by building a method, kind of broad. I mean, it, you know, it can be, uh, you know, it, in one in the case in the case that I'm going to work on with you in Skyjam, uh, it was as broad as everything in the re re literature pertaining to heart disease. So all the all the proteins that had been in, in, implicated in heart disease, uh, we we started with it as our method, uh, and then that method we run in a mass spectrometer, evaluate the results, refine, and and then we may go around this loop many times. And some of the things that we do during refinement are um, sort of an abundance evaluation, because if we have, say, 50 peptides that we might measure for a protein, they might actually all be measurable, but we would want to take the most abundant ones. Um, and then just even measurability, some of them won't, won't be measurable. Uh, a thing that we now typically look at in the Macos lab if we're trying to build a true quantitative assay or even a moving toward clinical assay is we want to know uh, do the peptides degrade under the conditions that we want to use them? So we found that actually quite a, quite a lot of them, uh, if you put them in an auto sampler in a sample vial and leave them there for 48 hours, then uh, you may not actually be able to measure exactly the same, same amount of peptide, even though they, you injected the same amount of peptide uh, into both. And so degradation is an important thing that we look at if, if we want to actually, if we want to do true quantitative assay. Uh, we'll even look at digestion kinetics. So, so run a, 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 a time series on digestion to understand uh, if you're digesting a protein, when are certain peptides released? Because they're not all necessarily released at the same time. And then we may further take the peptides that we decide on in that refinement and do scheduling and optimization and some things that you'll learn about in tutorials here. Um, so just to build the the optimal assay, assay for our uh, for quantification, and that's certainly where we try to end up if we're doing SRM uh, for a quantitative assay, and you know, sort of less less stringent certainly for uh, swath type uh, experiments, which which may actually be more discovery uh, focused. So. Uh, now I'm just going to segue into, and you're going to learn lots about Skyline, so I just want to give you uh, an idea of the scope of Skyline. It's actually grown beyond itself. Uh, it's not just the piece of software that you're going to start out with. Um, and uh, one of the things that we did several years ago was build an extensibility interface that allowed us to create, or allowed other people to create a set of external tools that contribute to the Skyline ecosystem. Uh, and if you go, uh, if you've seen this page where you installed from, uh, you can click this external tools button, and uh, that will take you to a page which I'm not showing here uh, that allows you access to a set of external tools. You can also just go inside of Skyline and go to the tool store, and that brings up a form like this, where you can see all of the existing uh, nine tools. Um, and this one, MS Stats, that I'm highlighting, that's the one you're going to use. Maybe some of you use this to install it. I don't know. Did anybody use this to install it? Come to this tool? Yeah, okay. So, so yeah, so that was uh, a beautiful piece of work done, done by some interns uh, on the project uh, to make these installable tools uh, that actually run R and, and get everything installed. And so, yeah, you can take any one of these tools and click the Install button and, and start up, or you could 
jump to the tool store by clicking this button. And the end result is, is to put the tool onto the tools menu like this. SRAM Collider is the one tool that is on the tool that is on the tools menu by default. Um, so these are six our six most popular tools at this point. Uh, MS stats up in the corner. Uh, they've all been downloaded a lot. Uh, we are now four of them are over a thousand downloads. Uh, MS stats probably downloaded as much as all of the other tools combined. Um, and that's what you're going to be learning about here. Another area where we've grown uh, past the you know the bounds of of just uh, Skyline the client application is uh, we've created a, a web application called Panorama, uh, which is a place where you can upload fully annotated Skyline documents. So you take a Skyline document, you add a push of a button in Skyline, you can upload it to a project on uh, Panorama, and these projects uh, you can you can get a project on PanoramaWeb.org which is a freely hosted uh, server that the, the Macos Lab hosts. Uh, there's over 120 projects right now and some big projects associated with big grants that we're pretty proud of. Uh, over 120 data sets uploaded and importantly, user controlled security. So you could have a project for yourself, uh, for your lab, for a consortium that you're, that you're sharing with and you can control who gets to see what parts of your data. You can create a whole folder structure under your project that, that has different sharing for different people. Um, and then we have just recently created this repository called Panorama Public, which is right on panoramaweb.org and allows you, if you have a project and you've created a folder that say has all of the data sets for your, uh, for your publication or your set of experiments, in that folder, you can now publish that data onto Pan Panorama Public. It gets listed, it's searchable, it's, it eventually becomes open. It starts out viewable only to reviewers and we help you manage the process of review. But when you publish, then everybody has access to your Skyline documents and we believe that this is a major step in making uh, your research more reproducible. If everybody can get up there and look at how, you know, what your process data looks like because uh, probably before this, frequently people are just publishing raw data and a transition list or something, whereas there's a, a lot of information locked up in Skyline documents and you can now easily publish them with Panorama Public. The other thing that you can do on Panorama is build chromatogram libraries. So you're going to work with spectral libraries, but we came up with this idea of chromatogram libraries, which is taking targeted experiments, so extracting chromatograms and measuring peak areas and then using that as the you know as the information for your next set of targeted experiments so somebody asks like well if I measure if I do if I build my spectral library with HCD and then I measure with CID or I measure something with something else is that a problem well this is this is the best you could possibly do because you can now build yourself a chromatogram library in exactly the experimental setting that you're going to do your next set of measurements in. Um, and then finally, something we're really excited about in the last year is uh, we've created a, a full QC system called AutoQC, which uh, runs a, a, a program on the mass spec computer and, and which automatically uploads QC runs on, into Panorama and then it runs statistics and eventually we're going to have it emailing people and, um, and so it's a pretty uh, exciting little thing we run we run it for all of the instruments in our lab whether they're doing DDA or DIA or or SRM all of them can be QC'd with a skyline document and this auto QC which uploads raw raw data files and then eventually puts them in panorama uh, also if you're in an organization that uh, that is a little bit more private and you can't be putting stuff up on a public server uh, we do have the Panorama is locally installable, and we have a num number of fairly large companies interested in and in helping to fund Panorama by by support contracts. Uh, but otherwise, it's all free and open source. That's what we always strive for. This is a schematic created by the woman who who pioneered the work on Panorama, where we have Skyline doing its refinement cycle, publishing up to Panorama, uh, where all, everything that you publish can be viewed in a web browser. 
uh, and then also you can you can do uh, search and reanalysis with R and uh, and other tools here because uh, you basically have a data you have this data store against this rat relational data store. Uh, and then you can also download those Skyline documents and again look at them in Skyline or you can download chromatogram libraries that somebody's built up here and use them for new experiments. So that's the, that's the flow. And finally, uh, the one other thing that we've been working on uh, is, and we're trying to integrate all three tools, uh, the you know, cl Skyline, Chorus, and Panorama. And Chorus is, uh, you know, at the start, it's, it's just a great place to put mass spec data. Uh, especially if you want to share it with people that may not have access to your disk. Uh, it's got a Google Docs-like interface. Uh, again, a, a, a specialized security model that allows you to decide what you want to share with people, uh, how much you want to make public. Um, and then it stores everything up in the cloud. Um, and it translates everything you upload into this distributed data structure that makes it extremely parallelizable and we've now integrated it with Skyline uh, so that you can have fast chromatogram access. The chromatograms is what is the language that Skyline speaks and what it needs to do its quantification. Uh, it also has fast single spectrum access. I'll mention that and it's extremely scalable. So this is, this is the idea where you're sitting at your computer with Skyline. You, Skyline then requests chromatograms from, from Chorus for some set of files. And this is especially important with, when you get into DIA and SWATH and you have much larger files. You get five, six gigabyte files and, you know, a hundred file data set can be, uh, you know, a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and so then you, you can just request a set of chromatograms and if they're at all limited, then it's going to be way faster to get them down to Skyline than it would be to uh, than it would be to extract on your local drive, or if you had them somewhere to actually pull all those files down to your local drive. And so I have a little video of this. Uh, so this is this is a video of this comparison. And so, yeah, so raw data download is required for local disk. You have to download the data. And so this is showing me running an FTP to download these raw files. Not very many raw files, um, but it takes a long time, even when, when I'm fairly close to the computer, hour and a half to download 15 gigabytes. Uh, and then this is the side-by-side -side comparison where I'm going to compare local disk from those files that I just downloaded. And here they are. It's only six files. This is, this is what DIA and SWATH are like. You have these really big files. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to import from Panorama. So I go, to the sa go through exactly the same UI, and I can click this Chorus. Oh, I'm downloading from Chorus, sorry. Uh, and you click Chorus Project and navigate the Chorus file structure just like I'm navigating my own file system, but this is actually up uh, on the Amazon Cloud. Uh, so I pick the same files, and then we get to watch them side by side. The chorus side has started, and I can already see I'm getting some chromatograms. And on the local disk side, I actually have to walk all of the spectra and extract chromatograms. And so this this uh, is going through that. Um, and meanwhile, we're you know we're onto our third file here. Uh, we're only uh, yeah we have we're only ex extracting 300. Uh, transitions, but I have a 40 file data set I like to test on that where I have 1500 transitions and I can I can process a file from chorus in about 10 seconds for each file where it takes considerably longer to extract the chromatograms from from local disk. So not only do I have to get those files onto my local disk drive, I actually have to, uh, the extraction takes longer. And here we have the data extracted. I can start looking at it in Skyline. Um, I can now split it to show both the precursor ions and the, and the product ions. And I can click uh, on these chromatograms to look at the underlying spectra that, w that the chromatograms were extracted from. And that's incredibly important, but it's something you can only do either if all of this, the files are up on Chorus 
or if they're on your local system. And I'll show that last one. I'll show you again in some slides. Um, and yeah, if we switch back, we're still on the first file. We've made we've made that extraction faster. It's not quite as bad as it looks, but um, but still, it's you know if if you're not going for hundreds of thousands of transitions, uh, we think that it's going to be faster to to just leave the leave the data remote and and ask it for the chromatograms. So this is a repeat of that last thing. Uh, Skyline offers a UI where you can if you've and you'll get to play with this yourself later. Uh, if you've extracted chromatograms, they come from spectra. So just as we saw that that 3D extraction uh, at the beginning, we are this is a this is a profile spectrum, and and we're summing up a set of peaks in this profile spectrum uh, to create this point. And so you can now you can see the width that Skyline is using to extract those. Uh, and and you can see which exact peaks in the spectrum got used. This is an isotope distribution. It's the precursor, the M plus one and the M plus two. And so you can see this classic isotope distribution. And you can see that this is a charge two spectrum just from looking at, or charge two peptide from looking at this. It also says it up here, but uh, the fact that it's about one Dalton from monoisotopic to M plus two makes it obvious that it's charged to. But anyway, so then then you might, one of the key things about Skyline is I wanted it to, you know, like we try to develop it all the time to make it, you know, able to do analysis that's directed by you. And I, and I actually have recently liked to talk about uh, Google Maps. Like what if what if somebody were to give you Google Maps but they gave it to you in the form of a set of PDFs and, and an Excel spreadsheet, you know, and you had to look up on the Excel spreadsheet what, what PDF, where that was located on some disk. You know, that would be exactly the same data, but in that, in that different format, it would be incredibly painful, but yes? What? Yeah, look. Mm -hmm. Separately. Yeah. So it's it, so yes. That that that's the analogy. the The idea is that okay, like before we created this this UI where you could just click on a point, we did have people who would say, "Oh, what I have to do is I have to go and figure out what time that was at, and then I go open it up in Excalibur, and I and I ask for a certain time, and, and you know, and then I can look at it." And we got people sending us those those screenshots, and and so we. We tried to make it much more, you know, really quick. You can you can direct your own access, just like you know in Google Maps. I can very quickly get to a, you know, uh, a picture of my house if I want to, but I don't start at my house. I you know I start somewhere up, and but I can I can get there very quickly. And so the principle is the same here. It's it's very interactive. Hopefully you're going to get an experience of that, uh, and you get to start asking questions about your data and hopefully getting answers really quickly and drilling in on what you want and coming back up and looking at things as a summary. So, oh, so the question I had here was, uh, and this is the reason I put on the screenshot was, well, what is this bump over here? Is that, is that like, you know, tailing? Is this, is this peptide like come out and then kind of eh, smudge all the way out to the other thing? Or is it somehow a double elution? You know, sometimes we see that uh, it doesn't contain a proline, but I'm told that proline peptides frequently have a double elution. So you ask that question, it's very easy to get some insight into it just by clicking on a point over here. We do that, and now you can see that actually the, you know, that this is, this, this peak comes from a peptide that's one, one Dalton lighter, right? Because this is its monoisotopic peak. You can see that it also shifted out of the center of this window, so whoops. If we go back and forth, we can see that it's shifting, uh, and that's the kind of directed access that the dir directed uh, interrogation that Skyline tries very hard to to support in a lot of ways, and hopefully you'll get to see some others. Finally, this is the Skyline team. Um, uh, the six developers, I guess, are uh, are 
uh, Nick, Don, Brian, Vagisha, Kaipo, and Yuval, and um, Nat is our program manager. He's really helped us step up all of this uh, effort to educate people. He, the 12 webinars just wouldn't have been possible without him. He's been very involved in uh, the, the translation projects to, to get Skyline into Japanese and Chinese. Vagisha was the woman who started Panorama uh, and has been the critical lead there. Um, Kaipo and Yuval are our most junior members. They're, they're, uh, Ka Yuval hasn't even graduated college yet, and, and Kaipo is straight out of college. Kaipo does a lot of the uh, spectral library building, so when you build your spectral library today, you can, you can think about and thank Kaipo. But the two of them together help to build the tool store on, on, the, on the website. Nick uh, has done a lot of incredible work, and uh, especially the very flexible external, the, the very flexible report system that allows the external tools to work. Uh, he's worked on the external tools a bunch, and he's done. And most recently, he's been focusing on uh, group comparison statistics and, and calibration, calibrated quantification, absolute quantification, uh, and. Uh, Brian has been working on uh, our. Uh, mostly he's been focusing on small molecule support recently, so uh, that's probably something that we're not going to use much here, but uh, Skyline has now extended into small molecules, so if you're a mass spectrometrist interested in uh, lipids and, and meta metabolites, you can now use Skyline for that stuff too. Uh, and Don has done a lot of great performance work. He built a test framework for us and um, and has and has also is, res is responsible for that beautiful graph that shows the import of the data that people like so much. Um, and then finally, uh, lots of collaborators. It's definitely like, and there's too many now, way too many to even list here, but these are a number of really important ones. Uh, and, and I encourage you to become part of the Skyline community and give feedback. And if there's something you feel strongly about, like, you know, interact with us and maybe we can help, help make it possible. Uh, a lot of those people, a lot of, you know, a lot of the people in here just did nothing more than that, which got, got involved and, and helped us build uh, a better Skyline. And then, uh, and then we have really great collaborators at all of the instrument vendors. They're all now funding Skyline. Uh, but it takes a lot more than just funding to make uh, Skyline work well for all of these instruments. And that's it. Okay. okay.